Welcome. My name is Gary Coburn and I'm here with ExtendingClouds.com. Thanks for joining. Today we're going to walk through building upon our last post and video, which if you recall was creating a new disk on a new SCSI adapter. So if, uh, if you haven't had a chance, I would highly recommend you taking a look at uh, our new disk with the SCSI adapter post. As you can see, I've got it up on screen. There's both video and images that, uh, that you can go through to, uh, to help create that day two action. Now, coming out of that, the one challenge that uh, was presented to me by my colleagues and customers specifically was, hey, that's great, I can do it as a day two operation, but what if I wanted to do this at provision time? Which brings up a couple of questions. Uh, first and foremost, does it make sense to do it at provision time? So if you're going to do this at provision time, would you rather have it happen at provision time and create the new SCSI adapter and create the new disk? Or would you rather have a template that is predefined with that additional adapter and SCSI configuration and just have it built into the, the, the tool to either expand or or just simply provision that way. Now, uh, my gut is that most organizations would rather just have another template that they had specifically for these workloads that required the additional adapter. That said, uh, the beauty and value that vRealize Automation and vRealize Orchestrator provide you give you the flexibility to make that choice for, for yourself. So. As you can see, and it will be included in this, there, there is a link to the VRO package. Uh, if you did happen to run through this, you will notice that that VRO package actually included not just the Create SCSI and Add a Hard Disk, but it also included the workflow for an EB trigger and disk add. And this is what we'll use today to walk through the environment. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's take a quick look at exactly what's configured here and what kind of things that you may choose to change applying this workflow in your environment. So first and foremost, let's let's look at, as you can see, we've got things like the VM, the virtual machine. That is not set because that will actually get passed during provision time. The disk size, so that again is also gonna get passed through a parameter in our workflow that comes from VRA that prompts the user to say how large of a disk that, that actually is. The disk mode, as you can see, I've got it hard coded as persistent. You may choose to do something else in your environment. The, uh, the idea is you can have any one of the, the standard disk modes available. Thin provisioning, again, this also is mine. This is a Boolean. It can be yes or no. In your environment, these are settings that you may choose to change. You may say, hey, I don't want to use thin provisioning because if they're using a second disk and second adapter, they want something that is a higher class of performance, if you will. The SCSI type, so we've got BUS, we've got SAS, we've got LSI, and we've got PARA. I just about always stick with PARA, but for your organization, you may have chosen another standard. This is something that you can hard code in here and, and have no issues. The criteria, uh, this is actually something that pulls in the string of the VM name and then finds a list of VMs based on that string name. And the VMs is exactly that. It converts that string into an array and then we pull that out. So let's walk through the workflow step by step. So <clears throat> for those of you who haven't seen this before, we start with the pull properties. The pull properties are your payload, which is the input coming from VRA saying, hey, I need all of the properties passed to me. So that literally has an input of payload and that's it. It has an output of disk size, which if you recall was the number size and gigabytes that uh, we've got passing it out. So we, we basically set the number in this task and the criteria. This is basically the string name for the actual virtual machine that gets provisioned. So we can execute the next set of st steps against that virtual machine. Taking a look at our actual scriptable task so that you can change this if there's anything that you may want to uh, 
alter in here. We basically pull all of the different information about the virtual machine. As you can see, we get the payload, which is that input, and we get all of the standard pieces and parts. We get uh, the, every one of the custom properties that is assigned to it, and your custom disk size, which is going to be important because we're going to actually utilize that setting in VRA to pass this. So we basically get the machine name and pass it to the criteria out. We get the disk size because that's we're prompting that for the user. So then we run the standard workflow that is get the virtual machine by name. And all this does is take an input of your criteria and pass out an array of VMs that it finds. We then take that array of virtual machines, the VMs, and convert it into a single VM, which is a virtual machine. And then we just say, hey, we want that VM to equal VMs zero, which is the first entry in your array. Pretty simple construct. Uh, the, these two are actually things that you'll likely use in, in just about everything that you want to ex execute against a virtual machine, if you will. And then create SCSI and hard disk. So this is a workflow that exists in our environment already that is this workflow. And all that workflow actually does is extract the virtual machine, determine what disk it's actually on, build the task that it actually needs to run, and execute that task. So if uh, if we look at this, you can see it takes the VM, takes the disk size, the disk mode, the thin provisioning, and the SCSI after type. And if you'll recall, these three are already set, and these two we just pulled out in the workflow. That's all there is to the actual workflow. Now let's step into VRA and configure the user interface. So to walk through VRA, the first thing we'll do is we will go to our administration, uh, property dictionary, property definitions, and we will create a new definition. This is where we'll choose our custom disk size and we'll give it a label of set your disk requirements in gigabytes. We'll give it the first index. It is an integer because it is a number. We need a minimum of one and a maximum of say 64, for example. And we can choose what increments we want those in. So I'm going to choose one, but you could choose four, eight, 16, 32, whatever, uh, whatever fits your particular requirements. And I personally am going to choose a slider because I like the idea of giving them something to, uh, to slide. It's one of those cool functionality things that makes it more user friendly to me. So now we've got our property definition. We're going to go into our property groups and we're going to create a new group that is disk add. We're going to first choose that custom disk property. We're going to set it to a default value of one and show in the request so that it actually demonstrates to the user. Next, we'll set the event broker trigger that uh, that needs to be utilized. So we'll give it the machine provisioned VMPS master workflow. So this is required to actually pass all of the properties that are collected. And we give it a value of star so it passes every value. We'll do OK. Our disk add is all set. Next, we go to our actual blueprint. 
we select our CentOS image as the example and we add that property group that we just created which is disk add. It now will give us the custom disk size and the extensibility lifecycle. So now that we're done with that, we'll jump back to administration, go to our event subscription and subscribe to this particular event. So we will create a machine provisioning. We only want this to run based on specific conditions. So all of the following, we want this to run, oops, at the lifecycle state name of the MPS 32 machine provisioned, which is the one we utilize and we only want it to execute at the state change phase of post. So that way it only runs once. And in my example, I'll throw one more clause on here that is the blueprint name of contains sent. We'll go into our orchestration workflow, select our EB triggers disk add. I don't want it to do anything else. I want to make sure that it actually succeeds here. So we'll put a timeout of five minutes and the v EV EB, event EB triggers disk add. We'll go ahead and leave that and we'll publish it. So now let's go to our catalog items. As you can see, we have our sent OS deployment. We now have a set your disk requirements in gigabytes. So I'll choose eight and we'll submit. We can watch the machine start its provisioning process. We can also jump over into our vCenter. As you can see, we're triggering our clone. Machine is being created and setting the custom values. For the sake of illustration purposes, we will show that there is one SCSI controller zero and one hard disk, nothing else. Then we'll jump over to VRO and wait for this to trigger. As you can see, it's triggered the event broker to add the disk. We're adding the hard disk to the actual virtual machine at this point. You can see all of the hard coded variables that get passed found SCSI controller zero, so it sets the next SCSI controller to one. Setting the task, found the controller and triggered the disk add. Now if we go back and look at that machine again, 
you'll notice we've added SCSI controller 1 and added a hard disk onto that. So now that machine has been provisioned at time of provisioning, it actually executed the event trigger to add the hard disk to that particular VM and on that data store that that virtual machine is provisioned into. So if there are no uh, questions, concerns, thoughts, uh, as always, I look forward to your feedback. Any information, any request, anything that you guys would like to see coming from extendingclouds.com, please let me know. We'll, uh, we'll add it to our list of items to, uh, to walk you guys through. Thanks very much and talk to you soon.